Hello, everyone. Here we are again for another Mavens Do It Better podcast, where we interview extraordinary experts who bring a light to our world. And I could not be more excited about this light in front of me here, Andrew Connell. Hello, Andrew, or AC, as many many people call you. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing, Heather? I'm awesome. I am awesome. Where are you coming to us from today? I am in sunny and warm Florida. Uh, I live in Northeast Florida, working out of my home office. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this today. It's been a long time. Since I've been listening to your show, and I'm I'm very eager to I'm eager to do this. <laughs> well, from a fellow podcast host as well. So yeah, I want to know what's going on behind you. You've got some gadgetry. You've got cars. You've got there's Lego. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. This is awesome. What is that? So it's it's all it's everything's Lego. Um, okay. Yeah. I yeah. for me. I grew up loving Lego, love building stuff. And today, one of the things that frustrates me so much about our job, um, I mean, we'll get into or my job at least, is that I don't get to do stuff with my hands and I don't get to, I don't get to show somebody like, what did you do today? I can like, look, I did this. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I, as a developer, I, I like to, I refuse to have like a lawn service and that stuff. I like to do stuff with my hands and right, Lego's right. a fun way to do it because it's follow instructions, but it's also very therapeutic to me because you can't think about much other stuff when you're doing it. And um, so it's just sit down, focus, and disconnect from the rest of the world. Yeah, I see so many great photos of you with Legos, but then also with your family. You're such, you're, Andrew's a family man, and there's all these great pictures of him with his, his kids. And, it's, and just, it's so cool to see that. So, yeah, I grew up on Legos, too. So I'm a big fan. So that's uh, cool. It, it's fun. It's fun. Yeah. Working from home is nice. It's just having the ability to, to spend time with them. And, yeah, I used to spend a lot of time on the road, but now – spend most of my time at home, which is nice. Yeah, absolutely. I was looking at, so Andrew and I've known each other for a really long time, um, kind of grown up together in the Microsoft and the SharePoint community. When did you, so origin story on tech, uh, where mm -hmm. did you come up from? Like, where did that start for you? So I, I guess back to SharePoint, or you want to go farther back than that? Let's go farther back. Why not? Yeah. The way so, back origin. Yeah. Way back. All right. So when I went to, uh, I won't, so I'll, I'll do this first part kind of fast. When I first went to school, um, I thought that I wanted to be a finance guy because dad was a banker. So I was like, well, that's how you got to be a banker and jumped around between um, marketing and all that stuff. But I always, it was right around the time when like the dot-com stuff was really starting to, to hit. Mm -hmm. And I was really interested in like building websites and I really liked the client side dev side of it. Um, I played around with it a bunch, came home, got an internship between my junior and senior year. And I didn't realize internship, one of those classic like dot com startup right, techie right. jobs. <laughs> and I never knew that you could actually have a job doing this stuff. Um, I went back, changed my major right before my senior year and got a CIS degree the best I could. And it's just been, I guess my, my passion has always been on the client side dev, not like design, but um, client side dev and I got pushed into the SharePoint space uh, by our company. We, <laughs> I worked for a, I worked for a Fortune 100 or 300 at the time, and they were like, "We're going to redo the corporate intranet and corporate intranet." So go do your research. And so I joined the team right as they were finishing their research, and the team's like, "We think we should use this product." And SharePoint was like number four on the list. And the uh -huh. CEO comes around, and he's like, "We just signed an EA with Microsoft. You're going to use SharePoint." I'm like, damn it. <laughs> That was 2003 and the rest is history. I've been, for, I got forced to do it. And I guess I just, I saw, and we, I guess we may get into it, but I just, I found, I found a place, I found a home yeah. um, and it, it worked for what I wanted to do. Uh, and it wasn't so much SharePoint that I loved. It was just that I found a place for myself and it, it just, it's just kind of evolved. And I just, I've tried to leave one or two times and haven't been able to, I, it just, just like Al Pacino, like I leave, they pull me right back in. Yeah. I, yes, I have had that experience myself. Yeah. I think the, I mean, we are, we often, and on the show, we have, I have a lot of wonderful colleagues that, you know, you know, you listen to the show. So it's like, we talk a lot about community and talk a lot about, you know, just the strength of it. And I think that's something for me that's always been one of the reasons that I'm like, oh, this is amazing because you, we jumped into it. And many of us have that sort of, you know, well, I, I fell into it or I got pulled into it or, you know, I was a theater major and I, you know, ended up here as well, you know? And so there, there's a lot of that sort of, oh, well, now we're in it. And wow, what a great bunch of people, you know? Yeah, it was a lot of the people and it was a lot of, the, I mean, for the tech side of me, it was the, I guess I, when I found the community, mm -hmm. 
I was in the community, active in the community for a while before I realized that I was in something special. Yeah. Um, I didn't, I, because you're, you're in it, you don't really realize, I didn't realize what I was in or how it was special from other, other community or other, other uh, groups and tech things. Um, for me, it wasn't so much about the tech. It wasn't so much about the community. It was more that I just kind of found that I found this one part of SharePoint fascinating mm -hmm. and it was more fascinating that people couldn't figure it out and they weren't doing stuff. And I had a way for when I would explain it to people, that's when kind of had a, a little bit of a, you know, I, I may be, I'm actually, I found something like the education space that may be, that may be my space now. Right. I got my space, but um, <laughs> I'm not going away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I, not going I, away. I had a MySpace account too, so it's all good. <laughs> uh -huh, yeah, no, absolutely. And you know, you, I think to me, when I think about you, I think of so many things, but w one, you know, you, you, to me have had a lot of firsts, you know, like you and CJ's podcast, you know, that MS cloud show, that was one of the first, you know, in our community, I think that happened, you jumped on that technology wise and, and, and Andrew was a very successful workshop presenter and course creator and all of that. So like, to me, I, I see you as someone who has always had his finger on the pulse of what's new, what's next and how to create something different. Mm -hmm. Where did, where did that come from? You know? So, uh, I guess when, when I was this going back to that story I was telling a minute ago, when I started working, uh, so I was working for Fidelity back in 2003 when we got pushed into doing SharePoint. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not the Fidelity, like the investment company, it's the blue one, which I don't even think it has the same name anymore. They do title insurance and uh, like 70% of all the mortgages in the United States goes through them. Right. Um, a couple years into that, we brought another company in to help to do some developer training. Uh -huh. And I, there was something about that that, I, when I, when I interacted with them, they ended up hiring me away uh, from Fidelity to go work for them and teach for them. And there was something about explaining stuff to people and seeing that light bulb click on or right. doing a workshop and seeing something that somebody was fr so frustrated with or couldn't figure it out. Right. That was the, I guess that's the thing that really like kind of got me into this. I tried to leave into a startup and I realized someone, one of my, the guys in my mastermind was just like basically slapped me upside the head. And he's like, you're an idiot. You, you're good at one thing. Why don't you focus on that one thing right. and try and make a business out of it? And that to me was education. It was explaining stuff to people. It was doing workshops. It was writing. It was blogging. It was, um, I, blogging was the first thing. And, and then it was from there, it was like, well, look, maybe I can build a class and started teaching my own classes with at a hands-on classes. And then it's, it's evolved into a lot of different things. Um, I guess the more I've learned about myself, the more I've changed my business and like what makes me tick and what doesn't. Um, yeah. as, as sick and twisted as this sounds and as probably negative as this really sounds, I don't mean it to sound this way, but it's, I'm a very blunt person. Um, I hate people. I'm very much an introvert. And I, I, I can't stand, like, so I found that I tried consulting <laughs> Right. And I hate consulting because I just can't, I get stuck on something. And part of it's just when I start working on something and I can't move on to, I want to figure it out. I mastered it. I don't want to go do it again and again and again. It's like, well, I've learned that there's nothing else to learn. There's no challenge. Right. Go to the next thing. Yeah. And when you're teaching like for consulting, it's always that way. Or somebody's, you know, complaining about, Oh, this doesn't work. This doesn't work. I'm like, I'm done with that project. Don't call me anymore. Right. 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 Um, <laughs> Like when I was teaching hands-on classes, it's like you, you build a class like this is fun. I can explain this to people and you do it two or three times. Right. And then the 20th time, it's just like, this is mind numbing. This is energy. This is soul stealing. I mean, this is, this is terrible. And yeah. so that's where it's like, it's evolved into now to where I just do video based classes and I don't have to speak to the people. Yeah. I teach, you consume it. And if you have questions, I can do the questions, but at least I don't have to say the same thing 30 or 40 times a year. Yeah. You sound like the, uh, not only uh, the heart of a technologist, but kind of the heart of an artist, you know, because like, that's how, you know, I want to do a play. It's, it's the one thing that it is or a painting or something. And then I'm going to move on to the next thing. So I love, that's the one thing I loved about working at, in and around Microsoft and in tech is that I found that that sort of brain activity is the same. Mm -hmm. you know, we do like that. We want to do it and go on and do the next thing. And I think that's why I keep seeing you. I'm like, every time I turn around, Andrew is like, well, now I'm doing this and now I've tried this platform and now I'm blah, blah, blah. I'm always just like, oh my God. So I love, 
keeping up with you and folks keeping up with him you're always going to learn something new and what's hot and and so yeah we're going to put everything about you in the show notes because i just i feel i love that about you and it's and it's very very specific you know it's cool and you said mastermind yeah and i know i know because we've talked about it but i know that that's something that um you've been involved in uh for a long time and um will you tell everybody what what that means and also sort of how that's helped you with your business and also in saying, you know, getting to know myself. And that's something I love teaching is about how to become the expert of yourself. You know, that's the whole thing about being a maven, right? It's like, how can we learn and be that and then use that to give good things to the world. So mastermind and learning about yourself, is that a big piece of that for you? It is. It's, um, it's something I've been doing now for, for maybe five years or so. Mm -hmm. Um, and professionally, I've grown more as a person. Like you've got, we've, as, when you do work stuff or personal stuff, you always have accomplishments. Right. Um, I see that as different than growing as a person or growing like intellectually or, or um, more, I guess, more being in tune to your own heartbeat, right? right. And what your Zen is. Um, right. So what a mastermind is, it's not, a, it's not a term that I've invented at all. It's, it's a very common thing. So people can go Google it um, or Bingle it or whatever you want to, whatever you want to use. Um, but what it does, it, think about it like this. So a mastermind is for business. You sit down with other people that are, that have a similarity to you. So I'm in, I'm in three different masterminds. Um, one of them is two. Well, one of them is, is in person. The other two are online. The one that's in person, we all share that we're all but one of us is independent. We have our own businesses. Mm -hmm. We all are generally doing the same kind of thing, right. but there's absolutely zero overlap other than we focus on Microsoft technologies. Right. So there's nothing really to get, we don't have anything to steal from each other. Right. Um, one of the fundamental concepts of it is that I like about it is it's a sense of accountability and the brutal honesty. So it's for, I mean, well, I think I can say this. It's like walking out onto a nude beach, right? You walk out and it's like, I got nothing to hide, right? This is it. And so these three, these three other people that I sit down with once a month, I actually have it tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night. Um, it's kind of an excuse to have beer and wings once a month, but <laughs> we sit down for about three or four hours. Uh, and it is, these, these three people know more about my business than anyone else. Mm. Um, these, they know more about what accomplishments I've had recently, what failures I've had recently, what challenges I'm dealing with and what my goals are not only for the next time we get together, but for the next six months and long-term what those goals are. Right. And when you can be brutally honest like that, it's like having your accountant sit down and give you a complete debrief. It's like having your business coach come down and give you a debrief but then also these people are also going to challenge you. And so when I say that my goal is X, Y, Z for the next six months, I don't do 12 month planning. I really do six month planning. Yep. So when, when I sit down and say, my goal is this over the next six months, if I come to the table and I'm like, like last year, I came to the table and I said, look, I've got this opportunity. Here's this. And the two guys are like going, that has nothing to do with your goals. And yes, it's a good thing, but are you going to give up on your goal or are you going to do this? And I made a conscious decision to go like, you know what? I'm going to change my goals because this is too much of a good opportunity, but it's nice because you don't have yes men in your head. You've always got yes men. Yep. And some of your friends are always going to have yes men because you know, if I tell you something, you don't want to be, you don't want to attack me for it right. because you don't want that to hurt a personal relationship. But with these three people, mm -hmm. that's what they do. That's what their job is. Right. Um, and so you feel like I'm sitting down later on this afternoon. I've already started taking notes on what have I accomplished since our meeting last month? What am I supposed to do next month? And how's the progress growing? And um, I've already started to get together, put my, my presentation, I guess, together to them sure. so that I can, they can hold me accountable. Another guy that I'm with is uh, in another mastermind. We, are, uh, we both do info products. Mm -hmm. he's, he's in tech, but a totally different area than I am. Right. He does eBooks and he sells them online and mainly through Kickstarters. Okay. I do video-based classes, but we both do info products and there's a way for us to sell and to do marketing stuff and, and share skills and, or share like tactics and stuff. And it's just the honesty for it. It's, it's very helpful because you, I know that if I show up tomorrow at my meeting and I haven't accomplished a certain amount of stuff, I'm going to get railed. 
and I don't, and for, for good reason. And I'm going to have to pick up all the beers. Um, <laughs> Aha. That's one of the penalties, which is funny because one of the guys in our group is, is doesn't drink. And so there's a couple of times when he's had to buy all the beers for everybody. And it's like, you don't drink and you're buying all our alcohol. This is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I, I mean, the thing is uh, account of, uh, mastermind accountability partners, you know, that kind of thing, I think uh, are so important for, for us as business owners and, and also just humans, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, cause I think it like, I have, different groups and different people for different things and for business. And then also just life, you know, accountability mm -hmm. of like who you want to be and how you're showing up and um, what's, what's, what's the emotional intelligence looking like lately, you know, and are you giving your best self in every moment? So I think that's super cool. I love, um, so tell everybody the name of your business. So the name of the business is Voitanos. Um, I do is, it's primarily, my life is focused around developer education. Today, it's really Microsoft 365 mm -hmm. and related technologies, which includes things like React and, and Azure, but mostly it's Microsoft 365 development um, education for developers. The business is Voitanos, which the name was actually created for something else. And the main thing I do is I record video, video based classes and then I sell those um, classic like show up, swipe a credit card, one time purchase, watch as much as you like. You got questions, you post them in a Facebook group and I can, I'll try and help. Yeah. And how long have you been doing the video based classes since you started in what, 26? So I did, let's see. So I, I started doing video based classes for, uh, for Pluralsight. Okay. And that was in 2000 and 12 I think yeah 2012 so seven years wow 2012 seven years ago <laughs> Boom. yeah exactly and I, started, I started doing that when I I, I co-founded and ran a company with a guy named Ted Pattison you remember Ted yeah I love Ted yeah yeah um, and we we did uh, in-person uh, yeah. SharePoint development classes mm. um, it just got to the point where I was tired of being on the road my kids yeah. were getting older and it like I said it was mind-numbing um, so when I left, uh, I sold my interest in the company to him. I kept doing plural site classes and I was getting frustrated because the marketing stuff, if I see something that I don't understand or that I can't figure out, I get, I, it's, I almost get like aggressive challenge. I, I see it as an aggressive challenge where I'm, I start getting angry. I'm like, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to crack this nut. This is not going to be a mystery to me. Right. And, uh, we hear it with terms, marketing, growth, hacking, yeah. all that kind of stuff. It, I was, I got frustrated with Pluralsight because they, they don't let you get direct access to your customers and do the marketing development and customer development stuff. Sure. Um, so I tried doing my own course. Um, and the first one that I did, well, I've only published one. I kind of over, I over committed. I'm still finishing it. <laughs> um, but the first one that I did, uh, it just immediately like just hit me going, I, the, the tech is fun. But yeah. the marketing side is what's really fun to me. It is, is yeah. really a challenge, like the automated stuff. And it's like, it's classic like ads and everything, but it's, it's not the kind of like sleazy kind of ads. I want to, I want to, if you're interested in what I have to say, I want to get it in front of you and convince you why, that if you're in the market for this, I'm going to convince you why this is the best thing. Right. If you're not, then I don't want to talk to you. I mean, I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to waste the space yeah. in your inbox and keep you from inbox zero. I, yeah. That's not my, that's not my goal. Right. Right. So. Yeah. So, I mean, sounds to me, you know, looking for and finding some autonomy mm -hmm. right, so that you could do your own thing. And then finding not only do you have this beautiful developer tech brain, but that you really like the marketing stuff too. <laughs> I do. I, do. <laughs> you know? I love these, this concept of marketing automation where you can, um, and I know they get a big, they got a flat, lot of flack for it, but I mean, I guess I'm one of the minority that doesn't have as much of a problem with it. Um, I love Facebook ads. Absolutely yes. love Facebook ads. Mm -hmm. Um, I love the, the ability to do like marketing automation with emails and having a whole bunch of workflows around it and making it seem like, I mean, what you see on camera, or I guess, right, or the listeners aren't seeing it, but what you right now see on camera, this is the entire company. There's nobody else. Yeah. Well, we're recording and Hey, we'll put it up on YouTube. We both look great. So. <laughs> <laughs> my blown out forehead from my windows. Right oh, here. Yeah, you're bright, right? Yeah. You look I'm trying great. to find shades to put up because like, <laughs> my forehead's like the shiniest <laughs> thing on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I try to get the camera to like autofocus and it's like, yeah, it's a little bright in there. I'm like, no, it's just my forehead. No, it's just bright in there. It's not your <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I think, I mean, and that's like, as far as a lot of us who have independent businesses, you know, or personal brands or as individuals, you know, it's like cutting through. Also, I love what you said about, you know, it's like, I want to get the message out super clear so that 
somebody can say, yep, or nope, you know, mm -hmm. um, and having the tools to do that for when people, you know, want to leave a list or, you know, or aren't interested or whatever. And you can definitely do that. Um, and there's so many great ones out there to leverage, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you and I talk platform stuff a bit um, and are on similar platforms now um, for some of the things we do. And then, you know, I'm working with people who, you know, they use HubSpot or they use Buffer or they use Hootsuite or whatever, you know, and what's cool is that, and then there's Marketo up on the, you know, high, higher end of things, you know, but I think what's great is because I, I have someone in my life who loves, he, he's all about getting the SaaS deal. Yeah. You know, he's my SaaS maven. He's always sending me like, Heather, you for $47, you can get lifetime access to blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you know, and I, I was just saying, I was talking to a bunch of gals and I was like, I don't buy shoes. I buy SaaS. I'm like, I, you know what I mean? It's like, I, it's like, I buy technology. I get so excited. And I'm like, and then I'm like, okay, am I going to use this? I'm like, yes, I'm going to use it. I'm going to teach my clients how to use it. You know what I mean? But like, I, I I'm, right? Right, I'm right there with you. I got something, same thing, Black Friday. Hey, you can do this lifetime for 125, 125. Otherwise, it's like 19.95 a month. I'm like 125 dollars, 19. Okay, first of all, that's a really good deal. Second of all, that's something I really need in my business. I've created my account, and that's about all I've done with it in the last two, three months. But I know, I get it, I get yeah. it. I'll get there, I'll get to it. But I, you know, the, one of the cool things about it too is being in this small business mm -hmm. um, like that you and I do, and I know we share some of the same, we use some of the same services. Right. In the world that we live in, in the Microsoft world, mm -hmm. it is, it's very interesting. It's very interesting for me to interact with this world um, because in the last few years of running my own business, I found so many more tools that I find to be so much more effective. Mm -hmm. And when you sit down and you talk to people like at Microsoft, like, you know, first it was Wonderless and now it's To Do app. And they're like, so you used to do for your tests. I'm like, absolutely not. No, I use something totally different and it works great for me. And no, it's not called Trello, but this works at, it works perfect for me. And when you show it to people, they're like, Oh, that's really cool. Or like the marketing automation stuff. I remember sitting down talking to um, a CVP at Microsoft and we were talking marketing stuff. They go, well, how do you go about doing this? And I just explained the whole thing and their jaw was on the ground. It didn't take long to set up. I'm like, how do we get an account for that? I'm like, well, first I'll use my affiliate code. So I can get a nice oh, kickback. Always. Yeah. <laughs> right. You're like, give me the money. Yes. I know. Right. No, but, especially if you're CVP because you're, you're going to be, you're probably putting a couple hundred thousand people on that. So. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, I think there's something about, I mean, we live in, I was talking about the gig economy and talking about like business owners. I think I answered a question on the Forbes expert panel and I was talking about, you know, it's, they're like, what, how can you save money? And it's like, well, and don't get me wrong. I love marketing teams. I think they're very amazing. And, but I, I a lot of times I come in and I will be an outsourced person, right. On a marketing team. But I also think that there's so many great tools out there that we can use and leverage. And, you know, it's unfortunately some people in sort of photography, video, Gra graphic design all of that stuff it's like the bottom of that for people you know it's like you can you you now have to compete on fiverr mm -hmm. you know like and it's tough you know i i know a lot of friends that are like man you know i remember when that two minute video used to cost fifty thousand mm dollars -hmm. well that's and that's so then it's yeah. a funny it's a funny attitude like i mean i've got it's, it's like in the, in the tech business to me i mean you have to evolve you have to look yeah. at where you are with things i mean there's yeah. no longer when we, we used to have people that would run an elevator for us and we get in, we tell them what floor we're on, they're close the door and they do that stuff. I mean, when their jobs started going away, everyone was you know crying about it. Yeah. But there are other jobs that have opened up that did not exist at all because of the stuff that we end up doing now. I mean, the, the yeah. stuff that, that able to go through and to stand up at your own, your own business yeah. that hosts video-based training like I do, this wasn't possible five years ago without a significant monetary investment. Now I'm able to run an entire business yeah. for barely four figures a month. And yeah. so it doesn't take that much, that many sales just to break even a month. Yeah. And when you can do that and it, it, it's just, it's so empowering or finding it, finding it, I guess I'm, I'm jumping around here. My, my lizard brain, I had, you, when I come across somebody that, that says, and that like, you'll show them something new and they're like, Oh my God, something else I have to learn. I'm like, you serious, right? Because maybe you should have been a carpenter or a plumber. And I'm not saying that those, that, that, that business hasn't evolved or doesn't have new tools and stuff, but the, the pace of change, that's, that's one of the aspects of this business. That's why I got into it yeah, so that yeah. I don't, I don't get bored. Right. It, 
and it, everything is changing. Like, oh, I can't keep up with this. Like going, yeah, I guess what? I'm getting older too. And it's, there's certain things which you just kind of narrow your focus down. Like, all right, I'm going to watch all the changes here instead of all the stuff in my periphery. I don't have to know everything. Yeah. And I think, you know, being like part of the MVP program too, you know, there's, there's specific sort of areas of focus too, you know? I mean, I think that, yes, should you have a wide swath on understanding um, the Microsoft technology stack? Sure. But I think, you know, you have a focus, I have a focus, like things that I really focus in on. Did I say focus? Um, anyway. um, <laughs> focus. Um, but, I, but I think that, you know, it is, and we're all trying to keep up, you know, and I, I think that that is what's exciting about it. You're absolutely right, you know? It's, it's something when I talk to people who are trying to figure out what they want to end up doing, um, uh, like a, a, a friend, his kid's getting ready to go to college and he's like, so what would you, what kind of, he wants to get in tech and he's like, so what's the one thing that you would, that you would recommend that he hit, that, that he looks at? And I, I gave him an answer. He's like, yeah, well, he's just getting in. So he has to wait and get his job for that whole thing. I'm like, no, you can do this at 15 years old. I mean, this doesn't, yeah. I don't think it matters. It's you want personal brand kind of stuff. When, when you when you find something that you like, you need to, you need to, I, you need to put something across that the community that you're in community being not only your friends, but also your, your, your potential customers and leads. Right. When they think X, they need to think of your name. Yeah. Right. That, to me, I don't, I don't, I'm not a big fan of, of working for big companies, but right. I, I think it's, you have to know like, Oh, you want that guy or you want that girl, or I've got this, what I need somebody that does this. Like you want that person. If you're a dime a dozen, and you're like, oh, I build videos. I'm like, great. So what's your spin? What's your angle on it? Oh, it's like, I do two minute videos that, that hit, that have huge, uh, that resonate huge on YouTube. Like going, I want Jim. That's the person that I want. Yeah, or right. I totally know how to go do a video that you can get a three second clip out of it like going, that's a Facebook video. I need that because I need to stop scrolling, watch that three seconds. And then I can build off of that. Yep. that you niche down as deep as you can now. Mm -hmm. Companies don't do that. People yeah. can do that. And that's what, if you're just a developer or you're just a SharePoint developer or you're just a SharePoint designer, like going, <laughs> that, that doesn't do it for me. That doesn't, I mean, that's a run of the mill that now you're, now you're in a race to the bottom for how you're on, on getting jobs. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I, and I also, it, you know, it's, I mean, the word storytelling has become a, a, a it's now a buzzword, you know, mm -hmm. and there's even a chief storyteller all around, you know, like you see that there, you can go on LinkedIn and look for storyteller as a job title now which that was not the case not too long ago, right? Yeah. And uh, interesting, you know, I think that being a generalist or a company that says we do everything and do it all, I don't think people believe you anymore. And, you know, I, I work with a lot of MSPs, um, you, know, micro, you know, managed services partners, and I see their websites and I keep looking at them and they're like, we do it all, we do this. And, I, and then how are you different and how are you unique? because how do I choose when you, when there's four of you here in Los Angeles or whatever it is, you know, like, is it just cause I like you personally or is it, or what is it that makes you different and stand out? And, and I think you've done a great job of that with your own personal brand of getting specific. And that was on purpose, wasn't it? It was on purpose. I mean, when I, when I started to see, I, I remember reading something about somebody talking about niching down. I mean, I, I always thought that when you started your business, you had to have, you need to generate like you know, $5 million of money and revenue a year. You need to have like 10, 15 people. You had to incorporate, right. you had to get an office. I'm like, I don't want to do that. I don't like people. I don't want to <laughs> do that whole stuff. So how do I do this just as a person, as an individual? And I went, I, I got into this one community um, after I, after I got out of the, my, uh, the hands-on training business that I did with Ted, yep. I found this community just by, just on a whim. And they, I, I saw how people were able to, start a business mm -hmm. without a ton of money, right. uh, really without much money at all. Um, and without having this massive customer base and they were paying the mortgage and they were paying the car bill and they were paying their health insurance. I'm like, okay. Now, and you start to see some of those businesses and I'm like, all right, now I'm not passing judgment or anything, yeah. but if you can make a living off that and I have an idea to do this, then I've got to be able to make this work. And it's not, it's not like downplaying your business. It's like, I yeah. never would have thought that would have worked. Mm -hmm. You've proven me wrong. So then maybe there's something here. Your storytelling comment, you're spot on. There was a book that I was just reading recently. Um, so I was pulling up my phone. I wasn't checking my text. No, that's okay. Uh, by, uh, <laughs> have you heard the book, um, Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller? Yeah. Yes. 
<laughs> I only laugh. I only laugh because uh, Russ Stolters, who is uh, a workshop partner of mine, is a Story Brand certified guide. And oh, so, really? Yes. And so I, I believe very wholeheartedly in the Story Brand methodology. I, I love Donald Miller's podcast. Have you ever heard his podcast? I have. I've heard a couple of parts of it. Awesome. Yeah. Or yeah. A couple. Of, so, yeah. Shout out to Donald Miller. Uh, I just, yeah, him. Yeah. So good. Yeah. So did you just read it? What'd you think? I've, I've gotten, I read, I got through part of it. Um, I get in those, <laughs> I wonder if you're like this. So I get in these, uh, a friend of mine came up with this word. It's not, it's not dirty. I don't think it's dirty, <laughs> but it's not a dirty word, okay. but it's called like entrepreneur. He calls it entrepreneur and it's entrepreneurship, but you're just constantly reading like the Seth Godin books and like yeah. Donald Miller books and like the, um, the, uh, uh, oh my God, I just forgot the other ones, but like, all, like Purple Cow, you read all these business yeah, books yeah, yeah, yeah. at a certain point, you're just like, all right, I'm good with the theory. I got to go get some shit done. Oh, sorry. I, I got to go get some stuff done. And so I, and I, I was getting into that and I was starting to go like, okay, yeah. I'm listening to all these different things. I need to go, I need to go be productive and I'll yeah. come back to it. But I got about halfway through it and I'm like, all right, pause. I get it. I started to get what the concept is. Right. I know right. enough to where when I'm ready to start doing stuff like that again, I know that's a, that's the resource I want to use. Yeah, I, I, your, your friend's term. Yeah, I mean, it's like people use the term food porn and other things. Like, mm -hmm. but I get it. It's like, yeah, I mean, I was like, I, I, you know, I've been working on a new website for Creative Maven, and you know, I took a snapshot of my bookshelf, um, one of them, and I like, I like put colors together because I like how that looks, you know. And so I was like looking, and I was like, oh my gosh, there's John Acuff, the Switch, and then there's like all the Malcolm Gladwell books, and then there's Start, and then there's. And I was just laughing. I was like, so yeah, so I have my, my bookshelves that I'm like, mm -hmm, you know, and like, what can you glean from this? And the thing that I really have been honing in on with that and the books is one, it seems to me that you kind of have to have a book, you know, that yeah. that's a big deal. Um, or online classes, especially in the sort of the business coaching, business marketing content space. Um, and it also, when I talk to people, I'm like, Figure out what it is that you own. Like you were saying earlier, what is it that when I say, you know, when I say, hey, I just did a podcast with AC and they're like, oh yeah, developer, developers and, you know, in online classes. Yeah, he's amazing. And, you know, and that's typically what they say. And you know what I mean? <laughs> Personal brand. Yeah. Um, but you know what I mean? But I think that people, as people and folks who are coming in to college and thinking about careers, but also anybody who's looking at what they do, I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like that that's really important is to like own, you know, like leadership or communication skills or whatever, the so those soft skills that we want to turn into the power skills mm -hmm. of people. Like that's what I'm attracted to in books and coaching and all of that kind of stuff. Is that similar for you? Yeah. It's, yeah. It is similar to me. There's, there's one thing that you said that I had the same kind of thought going thought and I, and I've, I've evolved what the way I think about it. Yeah. Um, over the last couple of years, I thought the same about books because I was involved in like writing books and stuff and uh, books to me are just from a consumption point of view. I love it. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I couldn't take a picture of my bookshelf. I can take a picture, a screenshot of audible. Um, yeah, I, right. I, read, I read books I, I, for, yeah, I read books for to <laughs> escape. Yes, um, yeah. I listen to books to, to grow. Right. So oh, my, my, my business books are all on audible. Uh -huh. um, same thing with podcasts. Um, but I'm like, I want to go, I want to go read science fiction. I want to go read like the Tom Clancy ish kind of stuff. Yeah, That's yeah. stuff that helps me disconnect. Now I thought the same thing where you needed a book to be kind of, to be, to have like an authority, but I think about it a little bit differently now. Yeah, um, yeah. To me, and because I see a book is like a, a blog, like a podcast, like a, um, like a course. Mm -hmm. And it is, too many times, like even, even in our discussion today, right? Yeah, there are yeah. things that we could just keep going off and off and off and just riff on if the other person wouldn't say anything, right? If right. same me and you, same deal. And I get the same thing with, with my podcast. But when you can go and say everything you want in a clear story and you can't get interrupted, that to me, that body of work mm -hmm. is something you can keep going back and referring to. And that's the thing with all those different business books that are out there when it's like, well, here's how to go do it. If I, if you sit down and go talk or listen to an interview with Donald Miller, would that be more interesting than a book? And to me, it would be in some ways, yeah. but to me it's, I can put forth a complete thought and not be interrupted in my class or in this. And then later on when I have a conversation right. with someone, 
I can say, go watch this lesson or go read this chapter. I've already talked about it. I've already said what I have to say. I don't have any new words to add to it. Go read that. Yeah. And that to me, that's the thing. Um, I used to say that about books. Now I see it as you have a class or you have a video class on Udemy or your own stuff that you end up doing, or you have a book or you have a blog. That body of work of just that, that single channel, not interactive, but that single channel of let me just put forth an entire thought that is researched and well thought out. That's the part that I, that's the part that I really like about it. Yeah, no, I like that. I, cause I think as far as levels of things, if we, if you will, I like it that you're putting books, a podcast, a course, a whatever kind of on the same level because it's just a different medium really. It is. You know? Um, and you know, with books comes, you know, having to deal with publishers and a lot of people are self-publishing, which is great, but books take a long time, you know what I mean? And as you yeah. and I know, being podcast hosts, we can, you know, do you drop weekly the MS yes. Cloud show? Mm-hmm. We rarely miss right. a week, we, but yeah. we've been for six years, I think we've only, we've missed probably maybe 10 weeks out of six years, something like that. Wow. Shout out to CJ. Lovely. Lovely. Oh, I carry the show. Not oh! I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> not really but yeah so um no it, it's fun we i've wanted to actually i've been playing with the idea of starting another one that's just me um yeah but mostly for the business side to kind of focus but but also for our marketing piece but yeah i love it i mean i find that i don't i don't blog i don't write as much um yeah. mm-hmm. and you know what i don't write as much now that i'm now that i spend more time podcasting because i have a co-host and we'll have interviews yeah but you lose that that one way kind of thing. So when it's like, when I want to explain something, yeah, I'm going to yeah. do it as a blog. Why? Yeah. Because nobody's going to interrupt me while I'm writing it. <laughs> right. right. When I publish yeah. it, it's just one thing. You want to ask questions. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. But let me get this whole thing. I mean, one of the biggest pet peeves in the world is being interrupted. I mean, I, that, you want to, you, somebody wants to be on my, on my bad side really quick. Just keep interrupting me. And I'll just, you'll just see me shut down. I used to get angry. I'm just like, you know what? Fine. If you like to hear yourself more, go for it. But I don't have the time for this. I got better things to do. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's funny. Yeah. And I know it, cause you started in 2013, you said six, something like that. I, I started the, I got out of the, uh, I started doing video based classes in 2012, 2013, yeah. but I didn't really find my footing until, um, 16, 17. Got it. Um, when- yeah. Yeah. I, have you, are there, um, thing, uh, tools that you want to share that you like? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, it's not, I mean, I'm sure that everybody being that, I mean, we're both Microsoft people, so yeah. people are pretty surprised with the whole, the one note, the teams, the outlook. Yeah. Um, I'm still a Slack guy for some stuff. Um, yeah. some I'm still, require it, right? Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's, it's yeah. Microsoft is great for the enterprise. If you want to do small business, Microsoft sucks and their guest user access and everything, it just sucks. So, um, but for me, I think the one app that I love more than, anything that nobody, nobody else I know uses it is it's called teamwork. Um, it used to be teamwork project. It used to be teamwork chat. They just changed their own teamwork desk. They just changed their name to just teamwork. And mm-hmm. it is like, um, for like the Microsoft people out there, think, think planner, think Microsoft project slash help desk slash project, uh, like personal tasks. Like I used to use to do, I'm getting stuff out of to do and, and moving them over to a, a, my personal project. Mm-hmm. Um, it's easier for it to manage. I mean, the mobile app kind of sucks, but I mean, that's fine. I don't need to do everything on mobile. Right. Um, but that's the, I think that is my favorite thing. It runs the t- all tasks for our podcast for my, my, uh, my biggest client. Um, I guess my biggest client is Microsoft. And then, uh, and also for Voitanos for running our entire, that entire bit of business. Um, and it's also in the chat or the desk part of it is my help desk uh, behind the scenes as well. Okay. Yeah. I finally, you know, teamwork, uh, a, a writing coach of mine, we use teamwork for Who do you really? with her. Yeah. I haven't touched it in forever, but, um, but yeah, that's what she, uh, had me use. And that was about five years ago, but, um, yeah, yeah. It's a cool product. I really like it. It's really good. They do a really good job with it. And it's a startup out of, uh, out of Ireland. Um, and they, I've met the owner. He came and spoke at a conference. I was at one time, sat down, talked to him. The guy was just, He's an absolute riot uh, and yeah. just, he's a developer. He's like, I didn't want to keep, I want to keep doing it. I didn't want to manage people. I'm like, that's me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's so cool. Do you find, you mentioned Facebook ads. I love Facebook ads too, to be honest. I really like them a lot. I think they can be affordable and the targeting is really good. And I click on them a lot because, you know, my SaaS buying problem. Um, but uh, 
<laughs> um, if, if you're looking at other um, sort of mediums of, say, say advertising or social media, where do you think um, for you has got the most play? Is it LinkedIn? Is it Twitter? Is it you know, like what's what's your? I can't figure out LinkedIn. I've tried it yeah. multiple times. Um, I've even got they apparently are having a bunch of updates they're doing to it this year. I I signed up for a webinar and it's still sitting in my email of the hey you missed us here's the recording of it and I'm, I'll go back and look at it. But yeah, um, I use. Twitter, but not the paid part of Twitter, um, just because I find that that's a, I use other products that interface with Twitter. So like you talked, you mentioned Buffer earlier. I'm a long time Buffer uh, user. Mm -hmm. um, I use another product called, um, another app called um, uh, Bulkly, um, B-U-L-K dot L-Y. Mm -hmm. And what you can do is you can like, you can put a bunch of tweets in um, mm -hmm. or connect it to an RSS feed or upload oh, wow. a CSV. And over time, it'll just randomize and just keep dripping tweets in. So I'll take some of my popular blog posts nice. and I'll just constantly post them in. And like a couple months ago, I wrote a thing about stop using Internet Explorer 11. Um, and it just all of a sudden I realized that, oh, yeah, people are still reading that. How? Because they're responding to a tweet. Well, the tweet's been up like probably 40 or 50 times. Right. But it just got dropped again uh, two days ago and people right. just start commenting on the post. Next thing I know, I see it go higher up on SEO juice. And yeah, um, so that that ends up being that's a big one. But I mean, Facebook ads, video ads, mm -hmm. I love it. I understand why people get, you know, have like a negative connotation to it. Mm -hmm. But if you can, it's, it's a tool, right? Yeah, right? As much as you can bag on Facebook ads, you can bag on cars and say cars kill people. Like, no, the people behind the cars are killing the people. <laughs> if they're and if they're drinking, they're using it the wrong way. They're screwy, but they're incredibly right. useful. Otherwise, Facebook ads, incredibly useful otherwise. If you tell me that I don't want to see more any more ads from Voitanos because I'm uninterested in SharePoint development, please actually do that because I want to find people like you and stay away from you because you're not going to be a potential customer. Right, right. Help me put my cost down. <laughs> <laughs> don't click on my ad. Yeah, yeah I love yeah, it. We, right. we started using it uh, for actually promoting our podcast. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually really hard to do that with uh, Facebook ads is you can't get a one-to-one -one of I can't tell if someone converted because I can't tell if they listened to it or downloaded the show based on if they clicked on an ad. Uh, right. So it's kind of a build it and they will come. I go like, all right, we're just going to, we're going to dedicate this much money to Facebook ads for the next two months mm -hmm. and see if our subscribers or downloads and subscription numbers go up. And if they do, it's like, oh, that's the only thing that changed. So that's it. Right. Yeah. Sometimes you got to do a one, one to one shot to see if does this work and check and then does this work and check. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's yeah, interesting. I don't get I don't get much out of it. I've tried LinkedIn ads a couple of times. It's been very ineffective. I've tried Twitter ads, very ineffective. Um, I, the one I haven't done yet that I want to spend more time on is Google ads, but I really feel like Google ads slash um, YouTube ads. But I, I there's just there's so much that you can get out of Facebook ads. And but. I, you know, it's just, people just get so bent out of shape about it. It's like, you, know, you tell people about it. It's like going, I'm going to be really brash here. Yeah, I do yeah. not care about you. I care about your persona. Uh, and I care if you're, if, if you're, if you care to buy something and if you don't tell me you don't want it so that I can not push it on you. I mean, it's a, it's better than getting an ad, just a blanket out of the email. Like yeah. someone offered me mobile app development from India. I'm like, stop. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, that happens in LinkedIn all the time, right? You connect yeah. with people and, yeah. How about, um, how about, have you played with TikTok yet? I have not. I was scared of TikTok because <laughs> of the security things with it. Uh, yeah. I read an article by a German researcher late last year that was eye opening to where I looked at my kids and I'm like, you will not put that on your phones or on your iPads. Wow. And it will not be used in our house. Interesting. Okay. It's fascinating. It All is, right. it's I'm fascinating gonna, what they're doing. I'm going to have to go check out that link. So that's, very interesting. I will dig that up and send it to you. It's, okay. it's like, here's the scary part. So I'll give you one of the quick examples. If you have a, like if, if I had a TikTok app or TikTok uh, video that I played right now while we were, while we were playing or we um, on, on the show, uh, there is a, it, it creates an audio, an audible fingerprint. And without you and I even knowing each other on TikTok, if your phone picked up that sound, it would know that you and I are friends and specifically that I was using my phone when I did it. You can't hear it. I can't hear it. The dogs can hear it, but it is unbelievable. You think that Facebook was tracking, was tracking you. And then there's just the whole concern that I had about, I don't, I don't really care about people tracking me. Um, but the, or at least I should say, I don't get bent out of shape about it. Like the whole, 
you know, cancel culture does these days. But I, I do have a concern with like my data going to people who I don't trust. Right. And I generally speaking like China and North Korea, I have a, I have a genuine distrust for um, when all that data go, is going straight into China. I'm like, what are you using that for? Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. Every, <laughs> like everybody who's got kids who are like TikToking 4,000 gazillion times a day, they're all like, what did he say? Uh, <laughs> I think the link you put in the show notes. It I was, think we need to put that in the show notes. <laughs> so. it, it, it's really geeky. It's really technical. But your jaw, you kind of hit the ground. And you're like, oh, now I see why the U.S. government said they were opening up an investigation towards them. I'm like, whoa. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I could talk to you for like four more hours. Cause I know. Like, no, I was like, I just, you're wonderful. Um, yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to, because my producer is going to be like, Heather. And I'm like, all right, all right. So. <laughs> no, I, I have to pay attention to her. She doesn't put my podcasts out, you know, um, she, and she's very smart and does a great job. So anyway, so Annalise, thank you so much. But um, you, do a, you do do a, you do do a great <laughs> job. And your interview from what, like last November ish was also fantastic. Oh, uh, we had a good time talking about, yeah, creating a podcast and what we learned. So yeah, she's awesome. Um, so my last question that I ask everyone is if you would share with our listeners uh, a spark or a moment person, place, or thing um, that seats you in who you are today that you'd love to share? I think it was in, uh, there's a couple, um, but one that stands out to me is the first comp- first big conference I spoke at. Um, it was in, I forget the name of the conference. It might've been like SharePoint Connections. It was in Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas in 2007. Hmm. And I, it was the first big conference I spoke at classic. Every time we've done that, my back was soaking wet. So I never turned around because I was sweating so bad. <laughs> Um, but I remember going through something that I thought was really interesting and seeing like this row of people in the front and they're all, like, their jaws were on the ground. They're like, I've never heard it explained like that. Now I get it. Uh, um, it was, I can't remember what I was talking about, but then I had another one where I was, where I was talking about, um, OAuth, uh, authentication model when it was just getting introduced to SharePoint. I was teaching it for like four months before I really understood what I was talking about. I was just rehearsing and hoping that nobody asked a question and called my bluff. <laughs> um, or rehearsing. I was just regurgitating what I or repeating what I, what I had memorized. And then someone, I kind of had this idea of like, well, this is all it is. Right. And they're like, yeah. So then I explained it this way to some people. And I remember like three ladies, two guys, two ladies and one guy in a class in Boston in like 2009. And you could, we always use it as a, as a figure speech, but I, I almost could see it literally seeing that light bulb click on, on their heads. Like, Oh my God, I've got it. I, I yeah, now yeah. I totally get it. I was like, it's not that hard. It's simple. And they're like, it really is simple. And it's, it's, that's the thing that I love to do is I like, if it, you think it's hard, it's not hard. This none of this stuff is hard. AI, that stuff's hard. Like deep learning, that stuff's hard but we're just talking about standard dev. This isn't hard. And so if, and I, if I, when I see the person click, when they get that, that, that's the thing that I love. That, that's what gives me the, um, that's what gives me energy right. to, to, to do, to do more of that. That's why I love presenting. I love getting in front of people to do that. Yeah. Yes. The introvert. On stage. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Every, people say that they're like, Oh yeah, but you're an introvert. How can you like to go through and present? I'm like, because nobody talks to you when you're on yeah, the stage. Right. Nobody's up there with me. <laughs> so yeah. it's just by myself. Yeah, yeah. I've talked to other people in our community who like they're like, put me on the stage, I'm great, but like get me off the stage and not to hang out and ask questions. You mm-hmm. know, or they'll you know, get me off. So yeah, get me off the stage. So yeah. You said you have one more. Do you have one more? Um, let's see, there was those two. Those were the, I think oh there was well, there was another there was actually you're right. There was another one. It was in two thousand and ten. Mm-hmm. 2010, it was presenting at the SharePoint conference in Las Vegas. Yeah. It was one of the biggest rooms I've ever had. Yeah. Uh, 800 people were in the room and I was presenting something that it was a 400 level topic, but to me, after figuring it out, it was like six or 700 level. The product group had never done what I was doing. I had my demo that I was finishing on a USB stick. And after my presentation, they asked for the demo because they, they needed it um, right. for, their, for their research. And it was one of those things that is like one of the hardest things in the world to pull off. Mm. Everything went almost exactly according to plan. One or two little tiny hiccups that only I could see. Nobody else could really right. see it. But it was, it's still one of those sessions that I actually, I, 
maybe once a year I hear somebody say it, and it just happened to be I saw it this morning on Facebook. Somebody made a comment like, "Well, you should ask AC to talk about uh, uh, what were they called." custom service applications. I'm like, Oh my God, I remember that the amount of work that went into that one, that one presentation, but right. seeing people come up afterwards and they still talk about it. Like, Oh my, now I understand yeah. how those things are. That was like, that was epic. I'm like, yeah, yeah. You have no idea how, how hard that was <laughs> leading up to it. And it's, I'm glad that I made it seem easy, but right. um, yeah, yeah, that wow. was, but it's one of those things. It just kind of says, this is what I do. Yeah. I need to do the education stuff. This is just, I have a knack for it. And so yeah. embrace it. Yeah. You're a teacher and you, that's, that's the other thing always about you. You always make it seem easy and you always talk to people in a way where you, you teach them and you don't make them feel stupid. And I appreciate that wholeheartedly because sometimes when you get in to technical things, people are like, Oh, you know, you, you don't even, you don't know that. And you, that you are the epitome of an excellent teacher in that way and a leader. So I appreciate that about you. I appreciate that. It's I, you, yeah. you got to send people when someone asks a question, you're teaching them something, you need them to walk away energized and dying to get back to whatever you just taught yeah. them. They can try it because yeah. if you just kind of explain their question and just roll off, it's like, yeah, don't remember that. I mean, I don't want you to check a box. It's like, inspire me to go do something. Yeah. And that's just, that's fun. Yeah, absolutely. You're a doll. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we got to do this. Oh, I know. I know. It was wonderful. Thank you so much for, sharing your story and being on and you've had me on the cloud show gosh forever ago so yeah it's been a while we got to do that again yeah all right deal so yeah <laughs> absolutely well cool andrew thank you so much really oh, thank you for it. having me i appreciate it you betcha everybody will put show notes up and you can find all the goodness that we've been talking about and uh that has been another episode of the mavens do it better podcast and here is to another beautiful day on this big blue spinning sphere thanks y'all <laughs>